Hey YouTube, this is uh, Curious Guy. Uh, today I'm outside, uh, and as you can see, uh, today's lesson is about chemistry. In fact, uh, what I'm doing today is looking at uh, the etching process for uh, homemade PCBs. Uh, in a couple of videos I've already shown you how I have created uh, prepared templates like this, copper sheet with some copper, uh, with some laser jet uh, paper printed on top. Um, and today I'm going to look at the actual uh, etching of the copper. So, uh, first things first, this stuff is extremely strong. Uh, and as you can see, I'm taking full precautions here with some butyl rubber gloves from a chemist shop. I'm also using a full face mask uh, to protect myself uh, in case of any splashes. Okay, so, the, um, the primary ingredients are two things. One is sodium uh, peroxide, oh, sorry, hydrogen peroxide, and the other is hydrochloric acid. When you mix them together in two parts of hydrogen peroxide to one part hydrochloric acid, uh, you'll create a solution which can etch copper quite nicely. And when that copper starts to dissolve in the solution, it turns green. Uh, this is some preparation I've already made for some earlier boards. So today I'm just going to show you how I mix the two chemicals. We're going to put it all in here so we store my acid together and then we're going to fill it into a plastic Tupperware and look at the etching process. And I'll describe the three boxes that uh, are in front of the camera here. So the first thing I'm going to do is use some hydrogen peroxide. And this is typically 3% volume. Uh, you get this from a chemist shop. It's actually a very good antiseptic and, and uh, wound cleansing material. You can even gargle with it. I'm just going to pour some in this beaker. And as you can see, I'm probably going to use about uh, 100 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide. Make some space. A little bit of a fizz there, and you can see that the color has actually turned a paler, almost aquamarine blue. Now the other material that we're going to add is hydrogen, uh, is a, a hydrochloric acid, and this stuff is extremely dangerous, as you can see from the stickers. Um, incredibly, this is um, purchased off eBay, uh, which you can do for a reasonable fee, uh, free shipping. Um, and you'll see this particular solution is 33% acid in water, so it's very, very strong. When we dilute this one part to two parts uh, hydrogen peroxide, we'll create about a 10% acid solution, which is what we'll use to etch. Now, you may not be able to see that on camera. Usually there's a, a faint fuming uh, coming out of the top of the bottle. That's to be expected. Now fairly carefully I have a rag here just in case there's immediate spills. I'm going to measure about 50 milliliters. Make sure it's capped well and put it well out of the way, preferably on the ground. Okay, we're back to that green color again. As you can see, there's some fuming out there. So let that funnel drip a little bit. And then I'll move it back to the, the beaker holding the acid. Now this hydrochloric acid, we're going to clean this up afterwards. But right now, again, put this safely out of the way. Okay, 
with the chemistry out of the way, let's talk about using this material. What I'm going to do is pour a, an amount of the solution into a plastic container. This is polypropylene. It comes with a nice little lid that I can put on top and seal the solution. And what I'll do is I'll slowly rock this back and forth with the board inside. Okay, so I have my acid ready. Now, the acid is primarily hydrochloric acid, and in fact, one of the important things about working with chemistry is to know your enemy. Understand how you can neutralize hydrochloric acid. And one of the important factors is baking soda, otherwise known as sodium bicarbonate. If you spill hydrochloric acid, use a solution of baking soda straight into the, uh, the acid. What will happen is uh, primarily the, the material will change from hydrochloric acid in water to carbon dioxide, pure water, and table salt, sodium chloride. So fairly safe ingredients. So in here I prepared a simple wash of um, uh, water with sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate doesn't really dissolve that well or very quickly saturates the solution. So uh, it's always good to have a, uh, a mixture on, on tap. And then finally, over here, I have just pure plain tap water, which I'll use to, as a final rinse. That's over here. Okay, so let's start this game rolling. We're gonna try etching this larger board and see what happens. I'll just start by rocking it back and forth. And if I can lift the camera. We can now see the process in, at work. Now I say this uh, often that this process is very much like making a black and white photographic print. And you have the first tray which is the active acidic bath to create the chemistry and to change the, the process uh, that you're looking for. You then have a second one which essentially stops that process, neutralizes it, and then a third one essentially uh, cleans up and, and, remain, and removes any remaining chemistry. I don't know how long this will take, but uh, I'll put clips in this video to uh, allow us to fast forward as we need to. And again, putting a lid on top is just being sensible about the fact that you've got high, highly strong acids. So I'm just gently rocking it back and forth, making sure the surface is totally covered. And uh, this is basically it. I suppose I should say something that naturally I'm outside uh, because there are fumes given off by this process. In fact, uh, the actual chemistry in here is turning the hydrochloric acid with the copper into cupric chloride, which is itself another acid etchant uh, for copper. Uh, but it also releases some chlorine gas, which is uh, obviously extremely dangerous.
uh, as as uh, as a chemical weapon, indeed. So that's why we're outside getting some good fresh air. And you can see that's a really nice color now, a really bright green. As more copper is being dissolved and added to the solution, we get more cupric chloride uh, as a result of the chemistry. Uh, you'll notice that that black toner from the laser jet printer is uh, holding up pretty well. Uh, it's uh, really clean, crisp printing. Uh, the laminator process that I use to get it from the paper onto the copper is uh, is pretty pretty handy, pretty useful. Still got a little ways to go. The process took me about five or six minutes with the smaller boards. This is the first time I tried it with a larger board, so uh, hopefully uh, it should come up relatively soon. As I say. You don't have to stick around for all this uh, sloshing about. You can just jump to the end where I'll finish the process and uh, show you the results. I'll put the camera back down. I'll set it up over here. You should be able to see it in the process. Just start to see some of the uh, traces of the uh, the board starting to uh, bear down into the, uh, the PCB material. So we're starting to make some traction now. <coughs> this is a guide. Um, I'm trying to manipulate this stuff, I'm trying to not touch it as, as much as possible. Obviously, I found a pair of cheap plastic uh, uh, tongs to be able to dig in and pull the thing out. So, uh, that's pretty handy. some of that sodium bicarbonate. Oh yes. So the copper is now starting to accelerate 
and uh, be removed from the traces. Perhaps can't see the total difference here, but definitely the outer edge up here is all gone, is all clear around the edge, and now we're starting to see that clarity in the first layers of outside areas of the grid pattern here. It always seems to uh, uh, etch first around the outside edges, and then it kind of gets uh, slowly spiraling in towards the center, which I guess makes larger boards harder to etch by home processes. there, very close to it. It's amazing, you can actually see the copper slowly disappearing. It's a real-time process. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there. Just going to move the uh, tripod out of the way. Another minute or so. Just looking at it. Let's have a look. I'd say that's it. Okay. Dra drain it and then watch it fizz. See any copper there? Okay, that's good. So let's pop it in the water. And there we have it. Let's cap this up. Seal that up. Okay, so the finished product, as you've seen, as you've seen, with a little bit of a label on the back. That's why we a dark patch. But otherwise, you can see pretty much all through the board. Yep. Okay. So thanks for watching YouTube, it's been a long video. Uh, my name is Curious Guy, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.